fans of the Scopeverse, we have an exclusive interview here with uh, Baron Mazaraka, a long-time friend of mine and somebody who we've, we've, we've brought into uh, brought into the Scopeverse recently. Uh, Baron, why don't you tell our viewers about yourself? Well, uh, good to see you, Chris, and uh, always a pleasure to uh, to converse and everything. I'm, I'm glad that we have this time together here. Um, well, let's see. What can I say about myself that, uh, that hasn't been said already? Um, I'm the writer and uh, main character of a comic book series called In Flesh and Spirit, which is uh, based on a multitude of uh, vampire-related um, cinematic and, and literature influences. Uh, in addition to that, I'm the front man of uh, Carnivore D and uh, Vistaria and another project called Mortal Plasma. So I'm keeping myself busy with a lot of dark and heavy things here, which is, uh, which is what I do. And uh, I'll do anything to avoid getting a regular job, so um, that kind of ties into it as well. And, uh, you know, I'm a workaholic when it comes to this, uh, this type of thing, and um, I love what I'm doing. It's all based on, uh, on, on, on passion and, and on insight, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to getting into more work. That's pretty much where I'm at. So, so, so what kind of... Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> so what kind of musical influences uh, have you got going, Baron? What, what, what's really spoke to you whenever you, you compose your... Uh, your pieces? Well, I mean, there's a lot of musical influences. Um, obviously, you can tell by looking at me, I'm coming from a very heavy metal, kind of hardcore, uh, goth background. Um, you know, that's pretty much my first love. Uh, tracing back, starting off with bands like Kiss and Black Sabbath, uh, getting more into the modern era, Motorhead, Plasmatics, uh, Carnivore. Um, and, and these are bands now that I'm actually doing tributes to or part of extensions of, which is... Uh, Tremendously flattering. Uh, I have a big background in the in the New York hardcore scene. I'm a former member of Sheer Terror, um, but don't hold that against me. <laughs> uh, they would have appreciated that joke. I'm pretty sure. Um, so that, those are my roots. But I'm into a lot of classical music, um, our film soundtracks, and I believe it a lot. Of, believe it or not, a lot of lounge stuff. Sinatra, Dean Martin, uh, Tom Jones, Elvis. It, I really run the gamut of. Uh, all kind of things, um, at best or at worst, maybe I'm just uh, have a multiple personality disorder. Um, but uh, it, it keeps me entertained. Um, right now I'm focusing more on the heavy stuff again. I stick to going waves, so I'm really uh, grounded into my roots here. And, uh, and that all ties into everything else that I do as well. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know how that goes, Chris. It all, it's all coming from the same place, and it's all, it's all different vehicles for, uh, for conceptualization, if you will. So, um, yeah, it, it, all, uh, it, it all has its place, which is a great thing. That, that was a long uh, version of the answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> editor, with my editor? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you're one of the most talented musicians that, I, that I've met. I, when I encountered you, it was, it was the Vampire Lounge stuff. Uh, I just fell in love with it. I think you've got a really good voice for that. I mean, that's obviously my, my thing so is jazz, like classical, opera. And, and easy listening, and it's just it was, it's phenomenal. If anybody gets a chance, get on YouTube, uh, Google it, have a look at the Vampire Lounge stuff. There's a great video I put on there. It's I think that was one of the first one of the first videos I saw of you. It was fun. It was a lot of fun, and I think that's the lovely thing about your persona is that you yes, you do the dark and heavy music. You yourself are not dark and heavy. You're actually a really fun, um, you know, guy. You know, you take a lot of joy in the stuff you do. Um, and, don't, uh, don't tell anybody about that. <laughs> <Maybe they're both laughs> <my own. laughs> but yeah, it's great. It's great to see. So um, let's let's talk a little bit about the comic book. Um, okay. and, you know, where did that come from? Well, it was something I, I wanted to do for a while. Um, as you found out recently, I was part of a of a, of a short comic series. Back, you know, some years back. Uh, called Blood Relations, um, and that pretty much inspired me to want to kind of, you know, take take it take it on all, all of my own uh, with my own story and uh, characters, etc. And uh, and I pretty much did it. So that, so that was a great thing. Um, I view In Flesh and Spirit as almost like a uh, a metaphoric autobiography uh, of myself and, and my life and, and passions and fears and things like that. Uh, metaphoric, all put within you know, comic fantasy kind of a realm. Um, so that, that's pretty much the basis of that. And then I just threw in all of my, like we said earlier, the, the horror and, uh, and cinematic influences. Um, Bram Stoker's original novel, 
Um, everything springs out of that in terms of uh, vampire liter literature. So that was an influence to Universal, um, classic Universal Pictures. Um, and in the 1970s comic books, uh, I think it's like Vampirella and the, the titles that Marvel Comics were doing at the time. So I kind of just put all that in a cauldron and I mixed it up. And uh, that's pretty much what uh, Winter Flush and Spirit is. Um, I was very fortunate to have a really great uh, artist dream team or perhaps nightmare team. It was very cheesy vampire pun, but can't go back and change. Well, we could go back and change with the editor. But um, so I was very fortunate to you know to have a lot of great people that were friends from uh, from the comic world who I admired. Uh, Alex Horley, the cover artist, um, phenomenal work on that cover. Alex, of course, is known for his work with uh, Vampirella and DC and stuff with Rob Zombie. We could have a whole other show just talking about his resume. Um, so that was a great thing. And then we had David G. Williams, who was uh, a Marvel and DC contributor, doing uh, the pencils and inks. It was great to have him. Um, another artist, Jerome Rimbley, came in to do some great tones on it, and then uh, and then Chris, you discovered it um, recently during during lockdown during the pandemic, uh, and you put in uh, your colorization and you came up with the idea to colorize it and uh, you infused new blood into it, as I like to say, and really brought it back uh, brought, brought back to life. And then uh, we brought in another artist, uh, Ash Barbita from Germany, to cover up some of the nudity that we had in the book some of the female parts um, due to the publisher and the distributors uh, what they thought would be best in order to have the book be more accessible and not have it be in a, in a, a plain brown wrapper uh, facing the wall in the back of the store. So uh, <laughs> so she came in at the last moment and drew you know wonderful articles of clothing on uh, some of the naked imagery. So it was quite a team. Um, hard to keep up with everybody. So many names, uh, probably more than myself. Uh, in future issues, we're going to consolidate the other uh, personnel, obviously. But uh, that's how it all came to be. And again, in the middle of this COVID uh, lockdown pandemic thing. So in a way, I look at it as uh, we really turned a negative situation into, into a positive one. So uh, funny how life, uh, life works out. And now in Flesh and Spirit is back up and running. And um, we have all sorts of things that we're talking about in terms of music and you know, other, other written works, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, it's, uh, again, it's funny how life works out and it's great to, uh, it's great to have the flesh and spirit back. I will say that. So, uh, so thank you again for, uh, for, for resurrecting it and, uh, coming up with a crazy idea to colorize it. And, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, again, I look forward to getting back to work and, uh, and picking up where we left off. So, so as, I, we, as people can see, I am actually wearing, and then flesh and spirits. I have eschewed the uh, the black and white attire that I am known for to, to wear this. Right, right. Uh, rather lovely t shirt. So if I stretch myself out a little bit, you will see the cover. The the, the Alex Rowley cover. It's absolutely beautiful. And yeah, the, yeah. Tone, the tones are fantastic. There's a color sign looking at this, and the tones are actually incredible. But it was a real pleasure and joy to work on the comic. And it, not just because of the amazing artwork of David Williams. He's like a good friend of mine, he's a lovely guy. Um, but your narrative really stands out. It's very, very powerful. And you know, there's a little you can see the hints of the uh of the Vault of Horror series and the Marvel, the Marvel classic horror stuff. Um, a lot of a lot of the uh, a, a lot of a, there's a mastercraft there, almost you see there's an Anne Rice undertone with it because we encounter your character. Um it was centuries ago, and it, as you say, it's not it's a biographical tale. I understood that as soon as I read it, and that was one of the reasons that I wanted to work on it because of the depth and the layering of the narrative that you you put in. Because you're you're a writer, so I want to pay tribute for, to your writing and your lettering as well. The lettering's great, um, you. you know, uh, great piece of work. So yeah, and it's available through, through Tidal Wave. Um, we'll put a link somewhere below the video so that people can, uh, uh, can click on it and buy it. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Everybody should have a copy of this. Uh, they, should have more, they should have more than one copy. Get like two or three. Um, Pass you know, around. Great Christmas, early Christmas gifts. Great. Yeah, yeah. Early Halloween. Uh, you know, in yeah. the end of the day, uh, it's good for every holiday. And uh, no new order is too big or too small, especially no. not too big. So uh, we'll, we all greatly appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, buy one for every room of your house. 
Uh, yeah, you'll, that, you'll always that's have, what thinking. You'll always have a, you'll always have one sitting about, right? So uh, yeah, I know I do. So uh, I got them all over the place here. Just, yeah. just here on my desk. Uh, just Could you maybe table? You know, Could so, you maybe uh, flick through some of the pages and just yeah, yeah, hear yeah. some? Uh, I'd love some, to. Yeah. Go ahead. So this, is, um, this is our recent. Uh, this is the book right here, Tidal Web yeah. Comics, um, with the full colorization. Um, I, actually, I, I forgot to mention, I had initially put in Flesh and Spirit out um, some years back on my own as a, as a strictly black and white um, edition. So here's where we started off with. As I mentioned the story, it was, it was Chris who later on, uh, you know, picked it up and proposed the idea to colorize this thing and, uh, and move forward with it. But we started off, um, you know, with this kind of a thing. Again, a real homage to uh, to the Vampirella comics from the 1970s, and then again, the titles of Marvel comics put out in black and white. And then, uh, and then from there, we took it to uh, another realm, adding the colorization to it. So it really, it really brings in, uh, it really adds a whole new dimension uh, that we didn't have before. Uh, it almost reminds you of uh, the Wizard of Oz, where the, the beginning of the film is in black and white, and then they go into the color segment. You know, that's almost what I feel like. With what we did here, like I feel like I've been transformed into another realm, kind of like Judy Garland was or something. But uh, <laughs> so, um, so it's been a, it's been a tremendous thing, and from an artistic standpoint, it's really been something else. Um, and Flesh and Spirit definitely belongs uh, in a colored format, I believe, no question about it. Even though it worked black and white, but uh, there's something really special about it, and uh, you know, and the palette uh, that, that Chris used that we had discussed, you know, prior. You know, we wanted a lot of the deep reds and the deep purples and the midnight blue and all that stuff. So, um, so everything here was definitely thought out um, and premeditated as to what would really, you know, get this and bring it to the next level. And uh, and it's been great. I'm I'm getting sidetracked. I'm looking at it myself here, but uh, <laughs> but it's been a blast. And and it's only the beginning. Uh, the book has been reborn, like the vampire is always. Um, you know. It, same thing in the horror films, that the monster dies at the end, but he's always going to be back again. So that's kind of where we are. So I don't know if this is life imitating art or art imitating life or, or whatever the hell it is, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to be doing it and can't wait to, uh, to the next step, you know. Also, real quick, I want to send an uh, exalted uh, uh, de de dedication to uh, the gang over at Crypto Comics who actually printed up those shirts for us um, and pleasantly surprised us with that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, a big uh, thumbs up to, uh, to the gang over there. Um, who would, we're going to be part of uh, having online the uh, Couch Con uh, this weekend. You don't want to miss that. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into more of that in, later in the discussion. But uh, it's been a real labor of love and, and a, real, uh, a real camaraderie, you know, amongst, uh, among friends and fellow artists. And everybody had something great to bring to the table. So uh, I couldn't be more content. I'm a very, uh, I'm a very happy vampire. Let's put it that way. So, so cheers, everybody. Down the hatch. I I am actually looking for it because we don't just have we don't just have the cool t-shirts. We have a sticker as well. Did you, did you see the stickers? Yeah, yeah. That I have one here as well on my desk. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. There it is. So there's the sticker. So that's yeah. the kind of stuff you can get from Crypto Comics, and you also get. Um, you also get crypto comics. You get digital stickers as well. I've created a complete mess on my on my uh, on my computer. I'll just leave it until until after we finish. But there we go. So uh, and yes, I do have a nearby copy of in place as well. Excellent. So um, so yeah, no, you get you get the little things from crypto comics with so digital uh, yeah. avatars as well. And I believe that you have a digital avatar of crypto comics. I've seen it. So. Uh, if people buy the comic through Crypto Comics. You can also uh, you can also advertise your your love of the Baron with a little digital avatar. So yeah. that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, this is the first in a, in a series of comics. I know that you have a story, you have storylines out, outlined. Yeah, we've talked about it. The really good, fascinating stuff, and certainly with work on the Stoke Reverse, uh, we're very grateful to have you on board. We, we you know I, I personally. I love the fact that you've, you're really engaged with what we're trying to do um, narratively and uh, uh, as a company. Um, and I can't wait to hear some of the music tracks that you've got planned to, 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 to work with the Superverse. I've heard some snippets and they're amazing. 
So I just can't wait to get uh, you know have the fans listen to, to what oh. you can do. It's a reverse. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, incorporating the music into it is definitely uh, definitely a good idea in your part, and uh, and it's a tremendous honor to be part of the Stoke Reverse. You know, again, special thanks to you and to Dacre. Um, it's great. Again, I mean, it, that's where it all began. Vampire literature. Uh, it's good night. You know, I can't even say anything else about it. It's self-explanatory. But uh, I'm so glad you enjoyed the music, the samples that I sent. Uh, there's plenty more where that came from. Um, you know, as you know, there's different styles that I'm exploring here. There was the soundtrack stuff, and then the full band metal stuff, and industrial stuff. So we're trying to, you know, we're trying to pick what's... Uh, what's best for some of the narrative here. But uh, I know you like the first instrumental piece, uh, Threshold, the uh, classical kind of thing. Um, I can see that definitely working. Uh, and there's plenty more where that came from. So uh, I'll, keep, I'll keep sending it along. I guess we got a little, uh, you know, preoccupied with some of the other stuff that's going on here and this thing on the weekend. But, uh, you know, more material will be coming soon. And uh, we'll make some selections. It, it'll be great to see, uh, you know, what works well um, with what. Um, I recently did a little promo video in, in my basement, uh, the, the thing that you noticed uh, from a few days ago, where I kind of, uh, I layered in one of the uh, tracks there, so uh, that, that was kind of cool, um, and that, that was a fun evening, I just was down in my basement with a fog machine and videoing myself, uh, those are the kind of things you do here in Long Island, New York, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, it's been great, I look forward to the next step, and uh, I'm thrilled with some of the things that we discussed and, and some of the uh, additional writing ideas and concepts. Um, it can only go up from there. So, uh, so gentlemen, again, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I promise I won't let you, you guys down. And uh, the best is yet to come. Or the yeah, more, I mean, more monstrous is yet to come. To put the it, it is an absolute pleasure to have you, mate. Uh, it's just, you know, you're, you're one of these very talented, multi-talented individuals. Um, thank you. I, you know, Likewise. Uh, so. That's it. Well, it's very kind of you, thank you. Um, yeah. there, there's, there's a, there, uh, we'll have to mention Gracie, because Gracie did a great job with some of your uh, some of your photographs recently. So oh, yeah. the, they Absolutely. looked incredible. And if I can point people towards your Facebook, uh, so that they can catch more of your, uh, more of your, your stuff. So we'll, we'll stick a link there as well. And I know you have a YouTube channel, so we'll, we'll get all the links posted up so everybody can follow you. And, uh, and see exactly how varied your, your range is. Uh, we mentioned something that's happened the weekend. We're going to be part of CouchCon. Uh, Superverse fans have, have probably seen this. Um, so, yeah, CouchCon. Uh, Baron's going to be about on Saturday, I believe, isn't it? Saturday you're going to be around? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, so, I'm on that around Friday, unfortunately. But uh, but I, I, will, I will make up for it on Saturday. Saturday. And Saturday as well. Saturday, you'll we'll, we'll be able to you'll we'll be able to purchase some of Baron's merchandise, some of his albums, and of course, in flesh and spirit. So you know, very important. Uh, yes. So before, just as we close, there we go. Uh, just as we close, I know the answer to this, but who's your favourite Dracula? It's, it's cinematic history. Well, well, cinematic, of course. Uh, Bill Lugosi. I'm sure uh, a lot of people would agree with me on that. Um, I mean, the guy forever personified the character, uh, even more so than, than what Bram Stoker wrote himself, perhaps. Um, everybody thinks of Lugosi uh, as, as Dracula. Um, that definitely in a, cinematic, uh, in a cinematic way. I mean, obviously, without the great novel, you know, as a foundation, he would have never been able to kind of put his own influence in. We're talking about uh, Mr. Lugosi, of course. So, yeah, but as far as cinema goes, I would definitely have to... Um, I always revert back to him um, when it comes to uh, to cinema. There's no question about it. So, uh, yeah, it was really just incredible how he was able to put himself into an already amazing established character that was written and just kind of bring a different interpretation to it. And uh, and the public has responded. Uh, and it's been 90 years now. Uh, the first Dracula came out in 1931, February 1931. So we're almost getting close to the 100 mark. But... Um, yeah, it always goes back to Lugosi. I'm a big fan of all of his works. Um, I, I even dress up like him. You've seen some of the photographs that I have. <laughs> yeah. um, I have the Dracula cape. I have a full outfit. Um, I've been in contact with, uh, with, with Lynn Lugosi uh, on a few occasions. I had the pleasure of being in contact with her. That's uh, Bill's granddaughter. Um, she approved of my photographs and my, my impersonation. So, uh, 
That's great. She didn't send me a cease and desist letter, so that's that's even better. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't send me the hate mail, so that's even better as well. Do you, do you know something for Dracula history? That's that's pretty powerful. That uh, it's you know it's that you've, you've, you have part of the Dracula legacy already. So you know, hats off to you, mate. That's, that's fantastic. And, yeah, it, it's really something else, and it's all just out of love. You know, for the genre, for the old films, for the old literature. I mean, that that's first and foremost where this is all coming from. Um, and anything else is just like above and beyond that. So it's all just out of a deep personal connection and, and sheer love. Uh, not to sound corny or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just I can't help but uh, it comes pouring out of me. <laughs> so uh, well, other honorable mentions for cinematic drama, Christopher Lee, of course, um, who kind of based his portrayal off of Lugosi, and Lugosi based it off of the, the Stoker novel, so it's interesting, the, the family tree of that. So Christopher Lee definitely comes in second in my uh, in my humble opinion, um, I would say that. But uh, what do you think about that, Chris, about the cinematic Draculas? What are your thoughts? Cinematic Draculas are difficult for me, because obviously I've immersed myself now in uh, not just the novel, but actually the the original manuscripts, and uh, I'm very literary based when it comes to Dracula. Uh, I've recently been going through the Hammer Horror stuff, which uh, so I love. The, I love Christopher Lee's interpretation. Absolutely. I think what Christopher Lee does with a look, you could write seven or eight paragraphs with, and it still wouldn't be as effective as Christopher Lee's, Christopher Lee's look and gaze. I think that's that's a part of the mesmerism. When Bram Stoker was fascinated by me, uh, mesmer and mesmerism, and he did incorporate that within the uh, within the character of Dracula. Um, Gary Oldman's portrayal uh, at the first third of the of the Coppola film was very good. I liked it. I, I think you know the costume design, the design of the castle uh, was fantastic. It moved Dracula away from the cappy stuff that was kind of going on um, round about the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the big drives of the Superverse is to bring the Boogeyman back into the bedroom. <coughs> and Dracula is actually quite terrifying and horrific individual. Um, and I'm going to stick a plug in here for Voices of Dracula or, or, or audio that's, that should be out next week. Uh, you will see the real Dracula. You'll see that really horrendous for a thick and the So, but you wouldn't want to fight into your room at night. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there's so many portrayals. Uh, even Leslie Nielsen did a great job in the, in the, in the parody. Uh, Dracula would be loving it. I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was great. Um, my favourite personification of Dracula is actually the Count from Sesame Street. But that's where it all started for me. <laughs> you see, I, I'm not the only one. Oh, so no. the, the, the Count from Sesame Street, there's an interesting fact here. The guys who crafted him knew a bit about vampire lore. Because the old lore is, if you threw seeds down at night, vampires are obsessed with counting. So the, the theory was you throw all the seeds down at night, and then they would count until daybreak, and then they would disappear when the sun came, and they would, they would vanish. But that's where the that's where the creators of the count actually crafted the character, so they had an understanding of vampire lore that a lot of people don't have. That the, 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 the you know so that, that's a, that's just an interesting backstory. But yeah, he, I he's, a, that. he's a he's a he's a he's a great he's a, he's a great character. Um, so yeah, there's so many different homages and. Uh, you know, pop culture references. Um, Monster Squad, actually. Monster Squad's a good one. It's a, it's fun. So lots of lots of the characters. And I think whatever people choose or gravitate towards, there's no right answer. I think whatever people gravitate towards at, at that chosen moment in time or um, what their flavour of Dracula is, I think it's all a representation of what Bram wanted. And Absolutely. You know, they're all tied um, into each other, and there's room for all of them. Yeah. So, so about it. as long as you're fun with it, why not? Is is, is always what I say. So, um, yeah, it's, that's that, that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. So, with all that said, I think we will draw this uh, up to you interview to a close. And I also want to thank Andy. He's he's quite invisible here, but thanks Andy for facilitating this. Yeah, uh, thanks Andy. Yeah, as always, Andy's here on hand to make sure that we both look good. 
Yeah, yeah. We need a lot of help, so. <laughs> but uh, it takes more effort, you know, for me. But, uh, you know, oh no, mate, you're you're looking great today. Absolutely fantastic. So don't worry about that. I try um, <laughs> so <laughs> so I'll, we'll draw this to a close. Folks, check the links. Probably either down here, uh, if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on CouchCon, I have no idea where the links will be, but they'll be there anyway. And uh, we will catch you uh, later. Mr. Rivers. Bye, folks. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for tuning in and uh, listening to us. We'll see everybody again next time. All right. And always great to see you, Chris. And uh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation on the phone sometime soon, I'm sure. We will. And uh, we'll see everybody again real soon. We look, uh, we look forward to the next step. So there you go.